differential analysis, keep or drop a segment. You may also want to look at segment margin analysis, another video, to understand more about these concepts. Many segments may appear to be unprofitable, but a closer examination may help management decide whether to keep or drop a segment. First of all, in order to determine if a, manage, if a segment is um, profitable, you may want to restate the segment information into the traditional segment contribution format. In this one, this set of data that we have here, we have a store that has three departments, ladies, men's, and children's, and it's configured in a contribution format, but it doesn't have things broken out properly by segment. And what do I mean by that? When we have a segment, a traditional segmented income statement using the contribution format, we will take all of the sales and the variable expenses associated with each segment, we will look at the contribution margin, and from that we will deduct all traceable fixed expenses. So for the children's department, which appears in a traditional a contribution format income statement, it appears that the children's department is losing money. But if we restate it into a traditional segment contribution format income statement, we can accept or look at only those traceable fixed expenses associated with the, children, the children's department. So salaries, salaries for the children's department would still continue, ads for the children's department would still continue, and depreciation on the fixtures for the children's department would still continue as well as the insurance. Taking the traceable fixed expenses associated with the segment will give us segment margin. This is different from the contribution format income statement. In this, we will look at segment margin for each of the individual segments. After that, we will deduct common fixed expenses, which are common to the entire store, and will continue even if the children's department is dropped. So utility costs will still continue, the rent will still continue, as well as general and administrative costs in this example. Another way to look at this as far as differential analysis is concerned is to calculate the, uh, calculate rather, the incremental change. So when we did our, for our earlier analysis, we looked at the individual fixed cost categories in order to determine whether they are not avoidable, meaning that they will continue, whether or not we drop the children's department, or avoidable, those costs that can be avoided if we do drop the children's department. Salaries were considered to be avoidable ads avoidable, and then not avoidable, those costs which will still continue would be utilities, depreciation, rent, as well as general and administrative expenses. Insurance would be avoidable because the insurance is associated with the inventories for the children's department. Now to look at this on an incremental basis, we would look at the contribution margin lost. So if these sales and the associated variable expenses are eliminated, the contribution margin that would be lost would be $20,000. From that, we can deduct the avoidable fixed costs of $15,000, and that is the salaries, the ads, and the insurance. Those total $15,000, and this means that by dropping the children's department, we will lose $5,000, which we can see if we look at the difference when we had a restated uh, traditional segment contribution format income statement, the children's department now is contributing $3,000 towards the common fixed expenses, whereas before it was seen as uh, having a loss of $8,000, the difference of $5,000 would be the incremental change, which we can do on a more um, a quicker calculation by looking at the incremental change, which is the contribution margin lost, deducting the fixed expenses from that, which is offsetting the loss because we're no longer incur those expenses, and it means that our total loss would be $5,000. Also, we can just restate everything and compare. So this is a traditional segment income statement in a contribution format, and so we have everything properly aligned. Now let's look at what will happen if we d drop the children's department. So the children's department won't have any sales, variable expenses, contribution margin. Again, the traceable fixed expenses will all be lost except for depreciation. It will continue until those um, uh, 
fixed assets are disposed of. So $2,000 would continue in either way. So if we drop it or don't drop it, and that's why it would be considered unavoidable. The $2,000 in depreciation would continue. The common fixed expenses also would continue and our net operating income using the same sales levels for all the departments means that our net operating income would be $15,000 as opposed to $20,000 which is the $5,000 we would lose if we dropped the children's store.